Welcome to God's Planning, Contemplative Preachers, Contemporary Age. Each week, join the Dominican friars as they consider all things Catholic. Welcome to God's Planning. This is Father Jacob Bertrand Jancic, and with me today is Father Gregory Pine from I was gonna I was gonna say from Switzerland, but that makes it sound like you're Swiss. You're not. You're an American. Um, but he's in Switzerland. It's the American in Switzerland, yep. and his name is Father Gregory. So mm-hmm. here he is. Hey. Hey. How you doing? It's uh, it's my pleasure to be both American and in Switzerland. And I said both, so that only admits of two things in a series. But were I to list further things that are pleasing to me, being on this episode would be a third one. So all of those things are good. Wow. That's great. That's really nice. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so this um, this Lent, uh, we started the week before Lent to get in all the virtues that we wanted to get in. But this Lent, um, we are doing a sort of mini series on the virtues. We're calling it Back to Virtue very creatively because last Lent we had a series on Back to Basics. So if you are interested in sort of getting some um, backtrack, some older tracks in, that might be something to check out, the Back to Basics series last Lent. On, um, but this Lent, the virtues. Uh, so last week was the first of the series, the back to virtue, back to the virtue of faith. This week we're we're going to talk about the theological virtue of hope. You're probably picking up a pattern. I bet you can guess what next week's episode will be on. Uh, and then there'll be four more weeks of Lent. So if you're pretty incisive, you might be able to even guess what those four episodes would be on. But we won't name them just to keep you all uh, at the edge of your seats. So this week we're going to talk about the virtue of uh, the virtue of hope. So why don't we at least start by giving um, a brief introduction to what virtues are? We've probably talked about this on different episodes in different contexts, but just to start from the beginning, from the top, Father Gregory, tell us a bit about just the virtues and their role in the Christian life, and then we'll talk about hope more specifically. Sure. So. One way to situate virtues is to think about all the different means that God gives us to enjoy uh, or to kind of come to enjoy life with him forever in heaven. So you can think about like, you know, the Lord takes human flesh. So the incarnation is a kind of means whereby we return to God and he gives us the church. He gives us the sacraments, but there are also these kind of interior dimensions of that beatific life that the Lord gives us while here on earth that come to full fruition, full term in heaven, namely grace, which is like health of the soul, and then virtues, which are, um, yeah, I would say they are, you know, kind of graced perfections, whereby our minds and our hearts and our emotions are kind of trained so that they um, act more perfectly. And then you can think about like the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well, and we've talked about those on past episodes. But you can think about it as like, okay, the kingdom of God you know, is is present among us. The Lord Jesus Christ takes human flesh and that has an effect, right? So it transforms us interiorly. So it's not just like something that happens over there or something that happens without, but it has a real transformative effect on our interior lives and virtues are one of those effects. Um, So that'd be like the big picture. And then we can get into talking about like what they actually do. So grace is kind of like health of the whole soul. So it makes you a good person. Uh, it makes you not only a good person, but it makes you to begin to live the life of God himself. And then um, the virtues, they kind of get into all the different nooks and crannies of our interior life. So, you know, with our minds, we can play host to the virtue of faith, which we talked about last week, right? Uh, And then with our hearts, we can play host to the virtues of hope and charity, for instance, but you could name other things besides. And effectively, what the virtues do is they, they make you good and they make you to act well. So they change you as an individual, they change you as a human being, so they, they, they heal and they elevate those powers, um, but they also are for acting. So they're principles or they're habits of, of operation. And I know that I just said some words that probably need further definition. So back to you. Here I go. Yeah. So they often, or sometimes, I think when we start to think about the virtues, um, particularly the, the cardinal virtues or like you know, prudence, temperance, fortitude, justice. Uh, it's easy to think of them in terms of things that we need to get. You know, I need to, I need to work on on prudence. I need to get more prudence in my life. And 
In a sense, that's kind of right, because we can talk about growth in the virtues, and we'll talk about growth in the virtue of hope a little later on. But in but that doesn't really describe what the virtues are. As Father Gregory was saying, they they dispose us to act in a particular way. Well, in the virtues, in, in good ways. Um, so they're, they're less of things that we sort of need to grab in the spiritual life. It's not like, what was that a couple years, was it a couple years ago? Um, the That Pokemon game where you like, what was it? You know what I'm talking about. Pokemon Go. Was that it? I was going to say it, but I didn't think that was it. So now I sounded more ridiculous. I think that was but it. Yeah, it's not. We're not doing that in the spiritual life to catch the virtues or to catch grace <laughs> or that kind of thing. It's it's not a hunt for them. But really, we we should think of the virtues as the the sort of way by which we are able to act. So a prudent person it acts prudently because they're disposed to and they're ready to make prudent decisions when when the situation demands. Um, and it's it's in that sort of transformation through grace uh, that we begin to act good um, in a good way. But more importantly, or not more importantly, but more explicitly, we begin to act like Christ. It's really important to keep in mind that in the goal of the perfection of the Christian life is not some kind of arbitrary, mm, let me just be a good person, get to heaven, but it's to be conformed to Christ and to imitate Christ. And Christ is the fullness of our virtue, is the fullness of virtue. And therefore, that that pursuit of um, the virtuous life is really another way of saying the pursuit of the Christian life or the pursuit of a life conformed to Christ. So if we if we're going to look at the virtues then, as Father Gregory, I think, said right they get into like the nooks and crannies that's like an english muffin and a spiritual description they get into the nooks and crannies <laughs> of our of our spiritual life and of our lives as men and women then they we can identify the virtues the whole the the theological cardinal virtues which are the big seven but then all the virtues that fall under that umbrella um, as aiding or as perfecting uh, those various parts of our lives. So one of the categories is the theological virtues um, of faith, hope, and love, faith, hope, and charity. We, I guess usually from St. Paul that trope ends with love, but I think it's better to say charity because it, it distinguishes. So faith, hope, and charity. Um, so getting closer to hope, but describe for us the theological virtues. Why theological? Is it, are they just, they're just for theologians. They're just for Dominican nerds, that's why, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Can't be shared amongst nope. others. Um, so when, when describing the virtues, it's helpful to class them into different groups because that gives us a better sense of the divisions, right? It gives us kind of a better sense of how we can go about, you know, like organizing them, as it were, not just like interiorly in our hearts, but, um, but so that we have a better grasp of the different divisions. So <clears throat> you can think about dividing the virtues based on where they come from. Okay, so some of them we acquire, which is to say like you perform an action any number of times, and as a result of that repeated action, you get habituated, right, to um, act in a particular way. And I mean, a virtue is just, it's a good habit, right? So it's a, it's a habit of mind or heart whereby you act stably or permanently for the good, right? And you're able to choose that good easily, promptly, and joyfully. So uh, when one becomes virtuous, it's not like you get, you know, like stronger and stronger, or you learn more and more rules for life. It's you actually come to delight in the very things that represent, you know, your good as a human being or your perfection. Okay. So when we acquire a virtue, it's like the, the good has greater and greater sway over us because we've come to encounter it so many times. But other virtues can be infused is how we'd refer to them. Uh, infuse, the word infusion, you know, you recognize it from, um, what are those things called that um, people sell and you like rub them on the bottom of your feet and they cure colds? Essential oils. Yep. You're like, gross, never use that description again. <clears throat> right. So uh, everyone's got an essential oil infuser. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm killing cool. myself right now. You're killing okay, me stay too. Stay with me. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, infuse comes from the Latin word infutere, which means to pour into, okay? So you pour your essential oils into the little distribution tray, and uh, God pours certain virtues into your life. <laughs> I had to go back to it one more time. Um, so one of the reasons for which we call the theological virtues theological is because they are infused by God, okay? So they have theos, God, as their source. But lots of virtues have God as their source. So when you're baptized, God pours into your life prudence and justice and fortitude and temperance and things like that. So the theological virtues aren't necessarily distinguished by the fact that they're given by God, rather by the fact that they have God for their object. So what does that mean, object? That's kind of like 
technical and jargony. Say more. Okay, I was hoping you would ask. Um, well, certain virtues have as their object like our own passions. So like temperance is about modifying your sense appetite and fortitude is about kind of moderating your fear or your lack of daring in certain situations. So those are, those are kind of about, um, yeah, just fixing up your interior life. Justice considers action, specifically actions towards other people. And okay, you see where this is going. Well, the theological virtues actually attain to God, which is huge uh, because in the ordinary course, we're kind of limited or one might even say imprisoned by our nature in the sense that we can't really go beyond what we as human beings are capable of. But the theological virtues give us a foothold or a handhold or a toehold or some kind of hold. They give us a hold in heaven. Um, and by acts of faith, hope, and charity, we actually reach God by God's own gift. So God gives us those virtues so that we can communicate with him in a way that's direct, um, in a way that's uh, theological. The Your whole essential oil bit reminded me of a little story, so I'm going to tell it real quick because... Um, I feel compelled to. So to. I, I guess it was a couple years ago. I was, we weren't together at this point in at summer projects. It was the year before that. So I was going to say, I'm not going to say where I already said it summer projects. And we were, we had to make a dash across like the campus to go to a talk, but it was pouring rain. So, uh, we were a group of us were running to a car. We got in a car and someone said something about like, don't crash the car in this like torrential downpour or whatever. And I just said, don't worry. I have my oils on me. Meaning like the oil of the sick to anoint people if we got in a crash and we were dying. And when I said, don't worry, I have my oils on me, the uh, the charming young lady who was driving the car looked up in her rearview mirror and she said, essential? Um, and I said, no, I don't carry essential oils on me. Uh, so that was great. Uh, so whenever, that, that's always what I think of, of a priest carrying his oils, just those different scented oils. <laughs> Right. So back to the yeah, theological Bergamo. virtues, back to hope itself. So theological virtues, they direct us or their object is is God himself. So that means that through the theological virtues, through being conformed uh, to these virtues of faith, hope, and love, we are actually directing our, our very selves to God himself. So faith, if you tune into last week's episode, faith is that virtue by which or through which we, we believe God. God and in God, um, and accept as a way or take uh, um, all of the things that I that are revealed to us by God. It's how we come to know God. It's an intellectual virtue in that way. Um, charity. Well, you'll have to tune into next week's episode to hear about charity. But this week we're talking about hope, and hope is that virtue um, by which it's that the theological virtue that's infused by God into into our will, not our mind, but our will, um, by which we trust with complete certitude in the attainment of eternal life, and not only eternal life, but the means by which we are able to um, attain eternal life. So it's a matter of trusting in the things of God, of hoping in the things of God, um, and the things that he promises. So if we begin to think of hope there, not just like, I hope that Father Jacob Bertrand is going to stop talking or that Father Gregory is going to stop making terrible examples and talking about like the bottom of his feet, uh, you know, but, but we're talking about the things that, the, the, the final end for which we are made. Um, so, I don't know, say more about that, elaborate on that, flesh that out in, yeah, yeah. in simpler terms. I think that... Um this I, I don't know if I've ever said anything in simpler terms, but here we go. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, it's it's cool to think about these objects as content rich. So sometimes when you say like just believe, it suggests to somebody that there's no real content to faith. It's just a matter of taking a leap into the void and hoping that you find God at the bottom of your freefall. But what one says when one has you know the act or excuse me when one makes an act of faith or when one has the virtue of faith is that god is true right so god is first truth and that god speaks so god we can rely upon god we can trust god to represent his own interior life in a way that corresponds with reality so by faith we rely upon the witness of god the testimony of god because if anyone is competent to tell us about life eternal it's him um so but, but it's not just like a probabilistic argument where you're saying like, all right, you know, if anyone's going to know about it, it's God, so I may as well put all my eggs in the God basket, and here we go. No, it's like one actually has access to that because God has spoken, and God gives us to know by the virtue of faith. Well, with hope, 
there's also a content to it. Again, one speaks about hope in terms of, like in similar terms as one speaks about trust, especially since the 16th century. But, you know, we we think about, or excuse me, as, as one speaks about faith, one uses similar language about like trust or reliance or things like that. Uh, but in hope, why, why can we trust in God or why can we hope in God? Well, it's because he is who he says he is. And specifically, we kind of hone in on those attributes of omnipotence and mercy. So God can do what he intends to do, and God underwrites all of his acts in creation with mercy. So, so God, you know, it says in 1 Timothy 2, 4, that he desires that all be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. All right, so he's, he's made himself known. Um, he's made himself known to be for us. And we can hope that those promises, which are, you know, evident in the scriptures, uh, which seem to apply to all, in fact apply to me, right, or to you, because God has said so. So hope um, places great stock in God's own self-revelation, and it clings to that, right? It, it holds firm, it holds fast to that, because, again, because God is who he says he is, and because God acts in a way that's consistent with who he is. So, again, it's not just a matter of saying, like, you got to have faith or, um, you know, hope in the Lord and leave everything else to, you know, those who have the competence to make further determinations. It's like, no, we can, we can actually know something about God, and by virtue of the fact that we can know something about God, it actually changes the way that we live our lives, um, and it marks them, you know, deeply. It impresses upon them a, you know, a godlike shape. Well, now that we've done this sort of Dominican uh, scholastic stepwise into hope, you know, started with the virtues, with theological <laughs> virtues, with essential oils, and then into hope. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, and when we return, we'll talk about living the virtue of hope, how to grow in the virtue of hope, and uh, how to, I guess, uh, incorporate that in, sounds like a brownie mix, but incorporate that into your into your spiritual life. So uh, stay, stay tuned, and we will be right back. You are listening to Godsplaining. Visit us at godsplaining.org to listen to our episodes, shop our store, and donate to our podcast. All gifts go to improving the podcast and bringing the gospel to more listeners. Thanks for your support. Welcome back to Godsplaining. This is Father Jacob Bertrand here with Father Gregory. And on this episode of our Back to Virtue Lenten series, we are talking about the virtue of hope, uh, the theological virtue of hope that unites us or that directs us to the things um, that God promises, namely eternal life, eternal beatitude. So we've kind of laid out the laid out the scene, right, with what is a virtue? How does it how does it kind of function? How does it function in our lives? What are the theological virtues as though as distinguished from the cardinal virtues, theological unite us to God directly, they have God as their object. Um, if you tuned into last week, you learned a little bit about faith, that intellectual that that virtue that impacts the intellect. Now we're talking about hope, that virtue that impacts the will. Um, so I think right there is perhaps a, a place to 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 stop and talk about how what did, what do we mean when we say a virtue affects the will um, affects our will uh, what do we mean by that how does that kind of work into our kind of just daily living as a Christian or our attempts to live as a Christian yeah so I think that um, <clears throat> will right obviously is the seat of choice and. In choosing, one determines not only what he or she is going to do, but also who he or she is uh, going to become. <laughs> I stalled out because I forgot what the subject of the sentence was, and I wanted to make sure that I had subject, <laughs> verb, complement, agreement. Woo! I'm killing it over here. Okay. Um, so, not only does one choose what you know he or she wants, but also who he or she is to become. So, there's the sense like with every with every choice, there's an element of the way in which it contributes to or somehow distracts from your ultimate destiny. So this is, this is always present in choice, and, and choice is always end-oriented. Uh, and by that I mean that you always have the end in mind when you make a decision. And if you don't, it, it kind of undermines the decision or it undermines the integrity of the decision. So like we're both assigned in Washington, D.C. at the Dominican House of Studies, and say, you know, like you pull out of the parking lot and you want to go somewhere, um, let's say, for instance, that you want to go visit Father Patrick in Providence. Why you would want to do that is beyond me, but let's say you want to do that. Um, then you would take a right out of the parking lot. You'd go towards the Boltwash Parkway, pick up 95 North, etc. 
let's say that you wanted to visit Father Joseph Anthony again. I mean, that's on you. Uh, yeah, but if you want to do that, you have to go to Charlottesville. You take a left out of the driveway. You get on 395 South, blah, 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 thus and such, 66, 29, yada, yada. Okay. But if you don't know who you're going to visit, you, you, can't, you can't leave the driveway, right? There's no... You could be like, ah, what a driveway. But that'd be the end of your moral act. So in, in, in all human choice, the end has this, um, yeah, this kind of governing or this kind of structuring shape to it. Uh, I don't know how best to express that. But basically, the end is of, is of great importance, and it gives shape to everything else that follows. So too with eternal life. So one of the ways in which St. Thomas refers to uh, men and women is as celicole, as heaven dwellers. So that's, that's just who we are. That's our identity, and that's our destiny, and that has to give concrete shape to all of our decision-making, and hope is the virtue which kind of like steadies us for that enterprise, because truth be told, it's really, really difficult to live always and everywhere for heaven, because life is sad, it's overwhelming, it's distracting, it's all kinds of things which would otherwise, you know, deter us from that end, but hope is what, again, shores us up in our resolve so that we can actually persevere in being who we are and in coming to enjoy what we are meant to enjoy. Yeah, I think so often when um, it's easy, it's always easy to lament things and it's always, it's kind of like a, a boring trope to sort of trot out the um, the ways in which kind of like modern contemporary millennials are bad at everything, um, which is true. I mean, I'm a millennial, so I can say it, but you know, bad at relationships, bad at responsibility bad at not complaining you know all these kind of things i mean there's some truth in all of it but there's whatever they're just kind of boring tropes um but it does give give me pause uh, to sort of consider like what what is kind of an underlying current in in um in the world in our culture with people uh and i think one of uh, one of those sort of foundational things that 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 defines us and this is perhaps a little pessimistic a little augustinian augustinian here um is is this sort of lack of hope um and and if we think about it in in the way that father gregory just described that hope um orients us towards towards that end um there's when we don't understand this this sort of heaven word reality that we are created for and created in it's very hard to have hope real hope in things because we don't have our eye on the end we don't even have our mind or a concept of the end um so i think if if i were to sort of identify a virtue needed for for now and i and i think that you know the past year in ways through the pandemic has really brought this out that the virtue a virtue needed for now is to is this rekindling of hope um this this sort of reunion of sorts with the virtue of hope because um but for the end of the virtue of hope, but for eternal eternal life, like what's the point? You know, what's the point of striving for the Christian life? I mean, you might as well go do whatever you want and then, you know, like be nothing and be miserable. And, you know, like, but for eternal beatitude, there's no reason to live the Christian life. There's no reason to struggle to, to grow in virtue. There's no reason to be, you know, uh, to pursue a vocation. There's no re except to pl for like the immediate gratification um, of those desires. So I think it's important for us if we're looking to grow in the Christian life and to grow in our relationship with Christ to have, um, to rekindle to yeah that the, the virtue of hope in our lives to pray for that because remember it's an infused it's something that's infused so we have to ask for it and um we also you know from from faith this is where the virtues begin to sort of exist together that we know we trust that god is who he says he is and that he answers the prayers so um when we pray for hope we can have confidence that that the lord sends the holy spirit and hope and all of these things um so with that being the case uh I guess it's the case because I said so, but for the purposes of of, Bingo. of, of, of this podcast, that being the case, um, let's talk a little bit about how it is that we can we can grow in hope. How it is that we well, how do you grow in a sort of infused virtue, something that's given? How do you grow in a gift? That's that even might be a a good place to start. Yeah, I think everyone's had the experience of being given a gift uh, by someone that you like and hoping that that gift keeps coming, right? So say so you have like a favorite coffee shop and you have like a great aunt who wants to give you something, um, but she knows that the last time she gave you money, you turned it into the prior, 
you know, and she's like, but I want to give you something. You're like, you can pray for me. You can have masses offered for me. She's like, but if I gave you a gift certificate to this coffee shop, would you use it? She's like, yeah, I'd spend it on the brothers, but I use it. And she's pumped. All right. So she gives you this gift, but in order, in order for her to keep giving the gift, you have to express to her the fact, one, that you're using it and two, that you're grateful. If you give, if you begin to like expect it just to be given because you're a swell fella, right? That's going to, it's going to turn her off to it. Um, or <clears throat> if you, uh, cease using it, right, then she's going to get wind of that and again, cut you off. So the key thing with hope is that you have to use the means that God appoints and you have to express your gratitude for them. And I think that it's, uh, it's really helpful to start there because it's not overly complicated, right? So the hopeful person looks towards eternal life, yes, but the, the hopeful p- person looks more immediately towards the means that lead there. So prayer, sacraments, specifically the sacrament of confession, you know, good Christian friendships, adopting penances, studying the faith, things like that, simple stuff that we've talked about. Wait a second, did I just list five of the six back to basics from last year's Lenten series? Incredible. It's almost like this is a motif to we're which we're pushing these episodes hard. Intervals. They're like stale donuts, you know, like got to get rid of them. <laughs> go, to, go to last Lent, <laughs> get those episodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys will love it. Um, right, so... We have to use the means that God appoints, and it's characteristic of the hopeful person that he or she will use those means consistently, right? Um, and so I think that, yeah, you, you can talk about all kinds of life hacks, tips, tricks, stratagems, and ploys, but, but, but it basically just comes back to the basics, he says somewhat repetitively. Prayer, sacraments, friendship, studying the faith, adopting penances. It doesn't have to be wild. It doesn't have to be a reinvention of the faith. It just has to be working within the bounds that the Lord himself has uh has set out yeah what do you think? yes i think so much growth so much uh so much of our growth in the spiritual life and in the life of virtues is is um well i think here of, of father jacques philippe this spiritual author his his line i think it's in his book interior freedom where he actually talks as a beautiful section on the theological virtues um but he um he says that um you know the like, being a Christian, I'm kind of prefacing it, but it's it's not so much about what we do, but about um, about making room for what God can do, for sort of moving the the sort of uh, crud out of our lives, the you know sin and attachment to evil things, bad things, less than good things, um, and then availing ourselves of the means that are offered to us to grow closer to God, to grow cro- closer to Christ. I mean, we can't demand that of God. We can't say, you know, Christ, come over here and you know help me levitate it's not going to happen that's not you know you can't demand that of god but what we can do is we avail ourselves of the means to sort of to to let god work um to receive his grace and to allow that to work on us and through those things that father gregory just listed um through availing ourselves of the sacraments through um finding time for prayer that quiet time that regular time that training ourselves in those disciplines and and this is particularly what lent is for to kind of rekindle that in our lives and um bring that to the fore and i think too that that it's it's helpful um it's helpful because the virtue the virtuous thing is always the mean even with the infused virtues it's always kind of sailing between the 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 proverbial scylla and charybdis of um you know the pitfalls of life so so too with the, with hope that we it's good to be conscious of um where hope goes wrong uh, not just become i don't know not to become kind of like ocd about am i doing am I doing bad hope or I've been doing hope badly, but uh, just to be aware. And I think that pointing out the vices that are attached or a couple of them are, are helpful. I and mean, that's, that's what St. Thomas does. So I'm not inventing this. It's, it's good practice um, to do it. So two of them, presumption, despair, they either the two pitfalls that, that we have to sail between when we're talking about, when we're talking about the virtue of hope. Um, yeah. Uh, Father Gregory, presumption, introduce us. Yeah. Presumption would be um, kind of thinking that you've got it on your own. So without the grace of God, I can do, uh, you know, whatever is required of me, and it's not that big of a deal, so no need to talk up this whole grace thing. But in reality, we can't do anything in the supernatural order except God give us to, you know, except God give us the grace to accomplish it. Um, so there's despair on the one, or excuse me, there's presumption on the one side, wow, preview of coming attractions. And on the other side, there's despair, um, which is saying like, yeah, I mean, these, these beautiful promises that you've made, Lord, are really high flying and very attractive, but I just can't see how they apply in my own life. Um, and as a result of which I just, yeah, I have to set them aside because if I think too much about it, it just depresses me. 
Um, but I think the thing that's characteristic about the hopeful person is that the ho- hopeful person is on the way and content to be on the way. So there's a kind of uncertain certitude to hope. So one is certain of God, you know, that God is omnipotent, that God is merciful, that God is true to his promises and that those promises apply to me. But one is also uncertain of him or herself, which is to say that you learn not to rely upon yourself because you know that you're weak, you're fragile, and that, you know, you can fail. And if we get uncomfortable with that uncertainty, that's, I think, when we're tempted to presumption on the one side or to despair on the other. So the presumptuous person says, I can't deal with the uncertainty of life. I can't deal with the uncertainty of being on the way. So I'm just going to kind of, um, I don't know what you would say, affect the certainty of those who are in heaven. And then the despair-filled person says, you know, again, I can't can't deal with the uncertainty of life. I can't deal with the uncertainty of being on the way, so I'll just affect the certainty of the damned. But effectively, you know, like, what we're meant to be is to be certain of God. Uh, And mind you, that's that can be a little bit anxiety-inducing, but we're meant to grow in our partaking of God's certainty. With, you know, just like we said, the simple stuff, uh, living hope on a daily basis, making little acts of hope and entrusting ourselves to God in concrete, small and, and in particular ways. Yeah, I think when I when I think about the hope and the kind of like, you know, sailing down the middle, the center of the lane there and with the dangers on either side, and I often think in my own life kind of like if you had like a meter, like, you know, if you're right dead center, um, there, there's, there's the virtue, but you know, the meter might indicate one way or the other presumption or despair that often that meter kind of wavers between the two. There are times when I think this is great. My life is awesome. I'm doing excellent things. And then it's like, oh yeah, God, uh, that's because of God. But then there are other times where it's like, oh my gosh, this is all going wrong. And you know, it's never going to turn out right. These kind of thing, you know, that kind of thing. And you're, there's the despair and you have to remember, God again, God again. And so I think growing in the virtues, it's not about um, kind of forcing ourselves to sort of ignore kind of our weaknesses where we might be given in this case to presumption or despair. But in those weaknesses, uh, when we find ourselves um, falling to one side or the other, recognizing that and, and begging God for the grace of the virtue of hope to grow in hope, um, begging God to be, to remind us and to enkindle that desire within us for his mercy and for his forgiveness. Um, and, and I think this is for the Catholic, this is most lived or this is lived most expressly by, by opening the door of the confessional, um, by kneeling down and confessing, confessing one's sins, because it requires us to recognize, you know, our place before God, that we're sinners before God, but it also, um, it requires us to recognize recognize our place before the devil and 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 death and rec- in, in saying that well even though I'm a sinner relying on God's grace His mercy His His offer of salvation that you don't win the day um, that God's mercy is is always is always ready to heal the you know heal the the repentant sinner um, I, so I don't you know during Lent as we're as we're crawling through the weeks and getting closer to Easter if you haven't made a confession during the season. Um, Think of that. Pray about that, and and ask for the you know ask for the grace, the inspiration to to grow in hope and and to move towards towards that. It's a yeah, I think a really beautiful thing. Boom! It is a beautiful thing, and I would say don't even bother thinking or praying about it. Just just do. All it. All right, there you go. <laughs> See, he's he'll tell you he'll tell you more directly. I try to be nice. He doesn't care. But I can be more pushy because I'm like you know forty five hundred miles away, so they won't come knocking on my door. They'll come knocking That's on right. yours. But you can do you know virtual confessions right over zoom no i'm just oh, kidding dude you can't do dude, that he's got jokes over can't there do that. No, no. all right well we're kind of we are hitting the the end of our time for today so um thanks for tuning in thanks for listening i would encourage you as we already have uh to to tune into this to this back to virtue series that we're having over Lent. so last week faith and today hope We'll carry on with the third of the theological virtues next week and then into the cardinal virtues. Um, so sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, overture to to the virtuous life. Um, thanks so much for listening. As always, with our kind of end of episode plug, uh, be sure to share, like, comment, help us in those algorithms. Share the episode with somebody who you think might benefit from it. Um, we are certainly praying for you during the season of Lent. Pray for us to um, feel free to give a few alms if you'd like. Patreon on our Patreon page. Check out our merch. All of those good things are available to everyone. So until next time, on behalf of our dear Father Gregory in Switzerland uh, and me here in D.C., uh, take care and God bless. Thanks for listening to God's Planning. 
a work of the Dominican Friars of the province of St. Joseph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Leave a review on your podcast app and visit us at godsplaining.org.